we are live this morning. Hopefully my internet stays working. And uh, yeah, so if you're jumping on, thank you. And I just wanted to say thank you to all. Oh, hold on a sec. There we go. It says no. Oh, now it says live. Okay, so in case I missed all the preamble. Uh, welcome to Coach's Corner. My name is Penny Hansen. I'm a health and wellness uh, lifestyle coach. And my specialty is in mindset um, and trauma for helping women through their trauma. And together with Coach Lisa Bolson, we co founded our Lux Life programs and we co-host this group. So for all the new people in the group, welcome. We're so thrilled that you're here. We hope that you get uh, something out of it. I'm just checking my phone to make sure that it is in fact live and you can you guys can actually hear me. So if you're jumping on and you can, this always takes a couple of minutes because every time I do this from my computer, there's no, there's no live. No, nope. should be here. Okay. Let's just go with that. You can hear me and all things are lovely. So what are we talking about today is, um, how to release and let go of your addictive behaviors. So how many here have addictive behaviors such as, you know, shopping, smoking, eating, uh, drinking, porn, all of it. I know nobody likes to say the sex one, but it's there. It's an addictive behavior. Um, it comes from a fight or flight response. And for a lot of people, um, when they've gone through sexual abuse or sexual assault, they tend to over-sexualize. Uh, hold on. Action needed. Close unused applications. No, I'll do that later. Just dismiss that. Okay. Oh. Hold on. There we go. Um, so they tend to dismiss because nobody likes to actually talk about them, but they are an addictive behavior and it is something that, um, you know, men and women rely on. So one of the things we want to look at when we're trying to release the addictive behaviors and why do we have them in the first place? So you can't let go of something if you're not first understanding what it is. And this is one of the things that coach Lisa and I teach inside of our membership. We coach with our clients and we get them to understand what it is that an addictive behavior is. It is something that works on the subconscious level and it's usually working against what you're consciously, consciously trying to do. So when we're looking at our behaviors, they're so very deep rooted that a lot of the times we bypass them and don't feel or don't think that they're addictive because they're so much a part of our daily life. It's such a part of what we do um, that we bypass it and we think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not an addictive behavior. But if it is in fact not serving you and if it's really not giving you what you want as what you say is your end goal, then, and you fall back into a pattern of something when you're stressed, distressed, angry, bitter, um, all of like feeling lonely, all of the low energy vibrations, that's an addictive behavior. Okay. So what happens too is usually when you get rid of one or identify one, then what happens is then another one takes its place because we get into this sense of, well, I have to stay busy. I have to fill the void because what happens when you open up that void, you have to start looking deep inside yourself. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to, I'm going to talk about that today is in order to get rid of the addictive behaviors, you first have to look at how much power that you give this. Okay. And this is something I talk about with my clients um, when we do the one-to-one -one because in actuality, if you're giving it power, it means you're giving it focus. And if you're giving it focus, that's all that's going to happen, right? So, you know, I, I belong to a bunch of groups on Facebook and a lot of them are about weight loss or weight training or whatever. Um, and you see the conversations all the time and women are all they're talking about and all they're focusing on is their weight. That's it. Why can't I lose weight? Why can't this? Why can't why? So, 
your whole subconscious behavior starts to focus on holding on to that weight because that's all your subconscious is hearing is the fact that, you know, it doesn't hear a negative connotation. So if you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to weigh this much. I don't want to be fat. I don't, I don't. Your subconscious, all it hears is I want to hold on to the weight. I want to hold on to, I'm, I'm eating, I'm this, I'm the, right? So when you're trying to change a mindset and change a behavior, if first you have to look at what your focus is on, what are you giving it power? How much power are you giving it? Okay. So when all of these things are happening, then this becomes the problem. Right? So we're looking at it from a completely different point of view of like, if I focus on losing weight, I'm going to lose weight. No, if you focus on changing your habits, because that's what Lisa, coach Lisa and I talk about. And that's what's in our membership is getting you to learn how to change your habits one at a time. Because let me tell you, I have tried over the last 27 years to do it all at one time and it doesn't work because it doesn't work. That's not how our bodies and our brains were built. That's not how our subconscious and conscious were like were developed. That's not how that works. So we have to take the power away from what you're giving it to, you know, so there's that, Oh, I need a drink. Do you? So this comes into the next one of taking ownership and full responsibility over your actions. And this is where people get a little stuck because they're like, oh, but I do. That's not true. You don't. It's so much work. It is so much work to own your response, own your actions so that when you're trying to make a change, you have to actively think about, okay, this is a lot of work. When you become aware of your actions, then as you start to build new habits, and again, we have to like separate the good and the bad. And we're going to get to that in a minute of how you're creating your own addictive behaviors with the stress patterns that you have. So when we're looking at making that change, you have to take the ownership. It can't be, oh, well, you know, and I read this, I just literally read this in a group this morning, um, a woman, and she was talking about binge eating and she just like blew her diet, which nobody should be on a diet anyway. Totally don't agree with them. Meal plans. That's a different story. So, and she's like, you know, her husband brought in uh, girl guy cookies and she's like, I'll just have one and she ate the whole box. And then she blamed like, and then she blamed her husband for bringing them in. Nope. He, that's not his responsibility. Now to be supportive. Sure. hundred percent. Did you need to bring them in? Probably not. But what the problem really is and lies in is she didn't want to take ownership for actually eating the cookies. She blamed something else. Oh, well, I couldn't do it. Like, right. There's all the blame. And when you have blame, you have shame. And when you have shame, you can't make a change because change doesn't come from that change within comes from love, compassion, and giving yourself grace. Now, did it happen? Yeah. So what she could have done, I actually wrote this in the comments. She could have just give herself, it's take a breath, have some compassion, have some grace, take responsibility for your actions. And tomorrow is another day. Okay. It didn't, you didn't end up like you didn't blow everything, but this is where comes into my third point of when you're creating your own stress cycle. Okay. And this is where a lot of the addictive behaviors come from is that when you're creating your own stress cycle, what you've got happening is a belief system. And this comes from like years of, oh, this food's bad. This food's good. Oh, I'm going to treat myself. Oh, I can have this on the weekend. Food is food. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's the consequence that comes out of it. Okay. So I use this with our client and I said, you know, it's about smoking. And yes, I'm going to use this example because she's probably watching or will watch it is that when you're talking about having that kind of relationship, what's happening is you're so focused on what's good and what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, because it comes from a core belief system. We grew up listening to our parents. Smoking is bad. Drinking is bad. Oh, don't do it. So we're all in defiant mode. All right, so now we're all in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, and we're in full defiant mode because our parents told us, oh, you can't drink, you can't smoke, don't eat those, don't eat those chips, 
That was my mom's. She said to me all the time, well, if you really think you need them. At one point, I just said, yes, I do. I did really need them. I really, really, I did. I just owned it. Yep, I wanted the chips, right? So it's a different spin. Now, did it lead to like, you know, eating disorder for myself? Sure did, 100% anorexic as a as a teenager and binge eating and all the other things that you know I had to conquer so <clears throat> when I say this it's not like I'm not coming from a history of understanding and knowing what it feels like to have all of these issues that are going on but they're all subconscious and until you actually take the responsibility then you're really gonna have a problem moving out of them and I mean full responsibility take total accountability now, when we come to creating our own stress and pressure from our belief systems is that we've got this belief of like donuts are bad. Oh my God, don't eat a donut. And then of course, as soon as you get like stressed out or, you know, you've got, you build up all this pressure and the stress around the donut. So that's all your body's here. Like that's all you're doing. So your subconscious is like eat a donut, eat a donut because you're consciously creating the stress and the pressure against having this food that's bad it's not bad it's not good it just is it's just food now is it going to give you the cons like is it going to give you the outcome that you want maybe probably not is there a consequence to it absolutely is it is does it serve you in the goal that you're looking to achieve probably not i can't answer that question for you you have to answer that yourself but if we create this stress and this pressure what's going to happen is you've created so much stress that you're now going to go and eat the donut because you're so stressed out right you just perpetrated your own stress cycle so i'm oh my god i can't eat this i can't eat this i can't drink this i can't smoke i can't this i can't this oh but now i'm so stressed out i need to relieve the pressure so i'm going to relieve the pressure by eating the donut having the cigarette having a glass of wine sneaking food in my car I'm going to cram this chocolate bar into my face before I get home with the kids and then I'm going to cook a really healthy dinner. And then you feel bad because you just crammed a full chocolate bar in your face as you're trying to like put a salad on and a salad and like some lean meat and vegetables on the table for your family. So now you create a stress on yourself and your subconscious is like, what the fuck is she doing? Now I don't know what to do. And the cycle continues. So in actuality, you've, only, you've perpetrated your own stress cycle by trying to avoid what it is that you're trying to avoid the fill in whatever the blank addictive behaviors. See how that, 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 right? So you've created your own and subconsciously and consciously, you've given it power. You've given it this like taboo. Oh my God, I can't do this. It's so bad. And again, I'm going to reiterate as we grow up, and if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you're living from childhood wounds that your parents are like, you can't have that. You shouldn't do that. That's bad. Right? Like, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up with that. My mom's like, oh, don't eat that. That's bad. Don't, oh, don't do that. That's bad. Well, then we become teenagers and we're totally fucking defiant. And we're like, well, screw you. Watch this. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I did it. My, my kids did it. Jesus. I think I laid out a challenge for our, for my son, my hus my ex-husband and I, when my son was like, I don't know, 10 or 11, and he made, I don't know, he was, made some comment. And I said, there is nothing you can think of that I haven't done already. Apparently that was a game on situation. And he did, by the way. Got in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Um, but he did come up with something else that I never thought to do as a teenager. So that's a whole different day. So when we're looking at creating all of these things, we are creating them ourselves. And then what happens on a conscious level, we talk ourselves out of like the accountability part of that because we don't want to take responsibility. And then we're like, Oh, somebody else will deal with it because growing up somebody else dealt with it so we pulled that forward so your subconscious everything you're doing is working on a subconscious level so if your actions don't match your words you're out of alignment you don't have a balance so what you're missing is 
the inner work, which is why what we do when, you know, when Coach Lisa and I put together our programs, when we put together our membership, this is what we lead people through is to understand that you can't change what you're doing until you change your mindset around it. And everybody's like, oh, whatever. It's just like, I'll, I'll be fine. I can do it myself. That's not true. Or everybody would already be there. I don't do it myself. I have coaches. I also have Coach Lisa and vice versa. Coaches need coaches too because you know why? On top of being a coach, I'm a human being. And I miss my blind spots. Like I miss the part of them where it's like it should be obvious, but it's not. So this is why when we put our programs together, we help you see where your blind spots are. So if you're watching and you've got... Um, I'm just seeing who's here. I'm going to see if there's any questions. I'm working off a different computer because my Mac display has died and I'm working off my Chromebook. So bear with me. Not loving it. I miss my Mac because um, I'm in a habit of using my Mac. <laughs> so if, if, you're, if you're wondering, like, you know, what is a habit? It's something that you do every single day. It's like when people talk about diet. It's not in an essence of like, whatever you happen to eat every single day, that's your diet. That's the definition of it. Good or bad, it just is. So there's no dieting, right? It's a change of how you perceive what you want your outcome to be. And that makes a change within your mindset. And if you're not changing your mindset, you're not changing your outcome. Because you can't get different results from an old belief system. So when we talk about, you know, why do we do what we do? This whole thing. We're giving too much focus and power on it. We're not taking ownership for our actions and taking full responsibility. And then we're creating our own stress and pressure cycle. So we have our own drama cycle. So we can live in this. And I've watched clients over the past 27 years live in a drama cycle, however that shapes up for each person, and they live there. And they don't understand why they're not getting out of it. Because they're not taking any responsibility or ownership. So, if you guys have um, a habit that you want to share, make in the comment, post in the comments below. Uh, Coach Lisa and I are also hosting our Mindfulness Challenge. It's a six-week challenge, and this will help you move through some of the thing areas that you're stuck. Uh, we also have our Mindset Matters book, so if you want the link to that, let me know in the comments below. We can do that, but I do re really recommend we put together a pretty amazing Mindfulness Challenge, and the difference is it will help you be more mindful in the moments of the day. So we want to get people to stop living in the past and living in the future. Because the future is it hasn't happened. This is a story we tell ourselves. The past is all done and gone. So whatever story you're holding on to is just a story you're telling yourself. So we want to be in the present moment, and that's being mindful. So that's what the challenge is to help you get into a space where you can be mindful about what you're doing so that what you're when you do make, go to make a change, you're more consciously aware of how you do that. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Uh, you guys know what to do. Hit the love button. Hit the like button. Uh, for those of you who are live, I can't see on my phone. It's not coming up. So I really hope this whole thing actually records like it says it's doing. And, um, you know, I'm not one for, I'm not, I'm not a lover of change when it comes to my tech, um, tech stuff. But here we are. New day, new computer. Not new. Just new format. And that's it. That's me for this week. So again, if you have any questions, please post them below and we'll see you next Friday.